Okay, so I didn't realize I got cut off in the last video, so I already answered a lot of questions, but I'm going to come back. So once again, I think we were on defining the variables x and y. If you get the one that has the x plus y equals, you know, whatever number, go to that number and see what it's talking about. So right now it's saying, um, it's saying where's 10 right here. So 10 is the total of what? Of cupcakes and brownies together, right? So you got to think about what that's talking about. If it's the total of cupcakes and brownies, it's not going to be the price of a brownie. It's not going to be the price of a cupcake. It's going to be the total number. So it's the number of cupcakes and the number of brownies. So just go to the this equation, the one that looks like this, and ask yourself, what does this 10 represent? And then decide what X and Y is. Okay. All right. So after that one, again, I had done a whole bunch of questions. So we're just going to go to the next one. All right, so again, this is a copy and paste, so control C, go into your Desmos calculator, control V, get rid of the extra one. Make sure it copied exactly what you need. Then your next one, control C, then go into here and control V. Again, it's copied too many, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Now you just put in whatever is in Desmos back into um, your, your question, right? So we'll start with the first one. All right, so this is the first line. It is in blue, and I know that by here. Um, it is a solid line and I just need to transfer that over so I'm going to click home over there it just kind of zooms in a little I'm going to get two points so I can draw a line so here's one point the blue line is 0 2 so 0 2 and then a second point is 1 1 or you can put this point 2 0 it doesn't matter I'll put 2 0 so there's my blue line. Then remember you gotta change your line. So right now it's solid, so it's solid. And then shade in, is it over here or over here? So the blue shade in is on this side. All right, so it can be on either side, but on my question it's on that side. Now I'm gonna go to the second line. And so that's the black line, right? So the black line is the point is one one and they're all of these points but if they don't give you these points you just have to find the corners right so there's zero negative one zero negative zero negative one and then there's this one zero point five no we're not taking a decimal there's this one 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 and there's my line all right solid solid line so solid and then where do i where's the black shade in that's on this side right so we're going to change the shade and put it on that side. Your solution is anywhere where both the green and purple or blue and black in that case is. So anything inside here, stay away from dotted lines. So you can actually pick a point on these lines. That's okay because they're solid. Solid includes. But just as a general rule of thumb, just stay away from the lines. But you just have to stay away from the dotted lines. So anything in here is what you're going to pick. So I'm going to pick this point right here, which is negative 1, 1. Again, anything in here is going to work. So negative one, one for me, but you know, you can pick anything there. Okay, it's just taking a second to load, but I know that I'm right, so I'm just gonna move on. All right, so next question. All right, so exponential functions basic. Okay, so with this one, you need, do need to know whether it's growing, whether it's decaying, whether it's compound interest, whether it's half-life, whether it's, um, what was the other one, double. Uh, so for mine, it says a new car is purchased. The value of the car depreciates. And what does that mean? Depreciate means that it goes down. All right, now I did pull up the formula sheet. So this is exponential functions. So I come to exponential equations, and this is that equation right there the only thing is though they don't tell you what these numbers mean a is what you start with b is your growth or decay x is time so in these kind of questions for b instead of b um, you're going to go either if it's decaying in my question it's one minus your decimal this is after you take your percent and you divide it by 100 that's what goes where, where b is and if it's increasing or it's gaining value, it's 1 plus your decimal divided by 100. Okay, so I just wanted to just remind you of that. Then A is whatever it starts with. So for my question, this is what it starts with. Um, it's depreciating, so I'm going to be using this one right here. And it's take the deci the percentage, take the percent divided by 100, and then do 1 minus that percent. And then you'll be, um, then put X uh, as 12. 
all right so i'm going to do it in the calculator but i did want to show you um what that looks like on your formula sheet so on the calculator real quick so it is y equals a b raised to the x power so i'm just showing you what it is so what is this what is the value so it's asking me what is the value so my starting a in my question is twenty thousand three hundred all right then my b remember i said one minus um or one plus so this one is depreciating so one is going to be one minus and you have to put in the fraction of um the percent which is 8.75 divided by 100 because we've got to make it a decimal then close the parentheses all right and then all of it raised to the x power right so um shift that to the x power and my x is 12. okay so you just put in that in the calculator of course if if yours was growing you change the minus sign to a plus all right if it's compound interest you'd use a completely different formula so this is my answer to the nearest cent so remember cents is um like 25 cents or whatever right so you have six seven five six seven six five sorry point and i'm going to write three numbers three five and then three so cent means i just need two numbers right but you first have to see what does this next number do so is that three going to change anything no so this is my answer if it was a five for example it would change it to a six but in my case it hasn't changed anything so that's how you round nearest cent means two numbers after the decimal all right then you're going to go to table to exponential all right so again you're going to put in the table so you plus sign insert the table literally type it in zero one two and three type in the y values 1 0 0.5 0 0.25 and 0 0.125 and we just use this um, same formula right here y equals a b x for exponential so everything exponential here's exponential formula so that's this is what it is y equals a b x so that's what i'm going to put here so y equals a b raised to the x power all right now it doesn't give me any answers because desmos wants a couple of things that you have to put in for one you're telling it hey i want from this table for you to give me some answers but in this table it refers to x as x1 and y is one, y sub one so let's go ahead and do that so put a one after the y and every x needs to have a one after it Okay, now that got rid of the numbers, meaning there's one more thing that it doesn't like, which is this equal sign for some reason. We're going to delete that, and we're going to put a squiggly line. So you're going to press the keypad, A, B, C, and then squiggly line is on the bottom right. Once you do that, notice your answers have come in. So to transfer your answers in into um, Desmos, you're going to go ahead and type in what you would have before. Y equals A, B, X, right? So, and I did shift six to get the power. So what's my A value? A is one. So instead of A, I'm gonna put one. I like to put B in parentheses when I do mine. Instead of B, I'm gonna put 0 0.5. And it says an equation in general, so I don't need to change the X. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be right because this is an invisible one, so technically you could take that off, but I'm just gonna leave it there and see if um, Delta Math cares. It does not care. All right, so that's how you go from a table to an equation. And while I'm on this, any table, okay, you can go to the exponential or you can go to linear. So linear, you'd use this equation and it will give you M and B. Or you can go to quadratic and put this equation in um, right here and it will give you A, B, and um, C. So same process for every single table. All right, find domain and range with technology. So let's go ahead and control C and then control V and then kind of change it up. Control X will cut, control V will paste, control X will cut, control V will paste. Um, but that doesn't look the same. I need to put a square root. So we're gonna go here, put the square root and inside that needs to be the X. So just make sure that you've copied down exactly what it looks like. All right, range. Range, remember, is um, bottom to top, right? It's your Y values. And then domain is your X values. I don't see a graph here. I'm going to press home. 
it's going to zoom in with my graph. So I'm going to actually do both domain and range, just depending on which one you get, right? So once again, um, domain is X, range is Y. So range is Y values, and domain is X. If you're looking at the x-axis, the x-axis starts from the left-hand side and goes to the right. And then if you're looking at the y-axis, it starts from the bottom and goes to the top. That's what you're looking for. So if my question was asking me for domain, where is my graph starting? Right here. And because I'm doing x, I'm going right and left. Where does it go? Like this. So it starts at 5. Does it include 5? Yes, it does. So that's closed. And where does it stop? Infinity. Okay, does it include infinity? No, because that's not a number. All right, in terms of range, so now I'm going to do range. It's the same process, only you're going from the bottom to the top. So let's start from the bottom of the graph. That's the bottom, right? So what's the bottom? Oh, I did domain wrong. Y'all, I'm tripping. Domain is this way, right? So that number is 0 to infinity. My bad, my bad. I don't know why I said 5. All right, so my domain is my x values. So it's, it starts from 0 because that's where this graph starts, from 0, and it goes to infinity. And then my range, my range is my y values, okay? So starting from here, the bottom, so starting from the bottom to the top. So it starts at 5, and it goes this way forever because this graph keeps going up and up and up and up. So it starts at 5 and it goes towards infinity. And I'll do another question just in case I confused you on this one. All right, and then that's how you write it. And you can write it two, of, two ways. So you can use interset interval notation, which is what I just did, but I'm going to write it in terms of um, inequalities. It's going to be y is greater than, and it's not 5, it's negative 5. Y'all, I'm just tripping all the way around. Negative 5. So I'll do open and close, and I'll say it's going from negative 5 to infinity. All right, I'll do another problem because, oh, I can't do another one? Hold on. Oh, good, I can. All right, so I'm going to do another problem because I might have confused you with that. All right, so plus 1, minus 4. You just put it in. Once you put it in, you just look at it. All right, so find the domain. So this is the x values, right? So we're going to look at the x values. So starting from here, from the le so it's left to right, right? X values left to right. So starting from here, it goes like this forever, right? But look at the values. So that's this number here, which is negative one to infinity. Then if I was looking at, so I'll go ahead and put that in there. So negative one to infinity, open and closed. Negative one to infinity. And then if I was looking at the range, the range is from the bottom of the graph. So the graph starts right here. Whatever number this is, this is negative 4. And it keeps going this way forever because it's still climbing all the way here. So the range would be negative 4 to what? To positive infinity. And then this would be a number, so that's closed. And this is open. All right, but I, that wasn't my question. My question was the range. So boom. Uh, next. Thank you.